Okay, great. So now that we know what discriminants are, we'd like to know what they can do for us. In other words, now that we have this new idea of what a discriminant is, can it do the same thing for telling us about the number and nature of roots of polynomial equations that b squared minus 4ac did for quadratics? And the answer is a qualified yes. We'll see now how our version of discriminants can tell us whether a polynomial with rational coefficients has repeated roots, irrational roots, or non-real roots. Starting with repeated roots, here's a cubic that has two roots that are the same, negative 4, and a third root at 5. If we compute its discriminant, the first thing we have to do is subtract those roots pairwise. But when I subtract the pair of roots that are the same from one another, I'm going to get a 0. So that when I multiply all the pairwise differences together, one of those factors is equal to 0. And that gives us a 0 discriminant. Is it an accident? Absolutely not. We're going to get a 0 in our discriminant whenever one of the factors in its product is 0. But the factor and its product is zero only when two of the roots are exactly the same. So the only reason we got a zero for this discriminant was that x1 was equal to x2. And that's true in general. Every polynomial with repeated root must therefore have a zero discriminant. So just like b squared minus 4ac for a quadratic, when it's zero indicates the presence of a repeated root, it's true for our general conception of discriminants as well. And so is its contrapositive. If the discriminant is not zero for a polynomial, that means that all of its roots must be different. This is maybe even a more powerful result, because as a mathematician would say, it's a generic result. Most polynomials have non-zero discriminants, and therefore most polynomials have roots that are all distinct. Second, our discriminant can tell us whether or not there is an irrational root for a polynomial with rational coefficients. So here's a cubic that has two irrational roots, 1 plus minus radical 10. And when we compute the discriminant by multiplying the pairwise differences of these roots by one another, we get the number negative 2 radical 10, which is not a rational number. And that's not an accident that it's not rational, because we got it by subtracting and multiplying numbers together that were not all rational. It's reasonable to expect that when two of our roots are 1 plus minus radical 10, that when we subtract and multiply all of our roots together, we might get something that's not rational. The safe statement is that if all of the roots of our polynomial are rational, then our discriminant has to be rational. So all rational roots imply a rational discriminant. Why? Because how do we get the discriminant? By subtracting and multiplying roots by one another. And if all those roots are rational, then we're subtracting and multiplying rational numbers by one another. And that answer is always rational because the rational numbers form a ring. The contrapositive of this statement is, again, perhaps even more powerful. If the discriminant of a polynomial is not rational, then that must mean that not all of the roots of p are rational. So the contrapositive tells us an irrational discriminant implies the existence of at least one irrational root. And what's good for irrational is also good for non-real. Here's an example of a cubic polynomial with two non-real roots, negative 1 plus minus radical negative 10, arranged in the complex plane as shown. When we compute its discriminant by multiplying the pairwise differences of these roots one by another, we again get an answer, a product, which is not a rational number. It's not even a real number, 38 square root of negative 10. Again, it's not an accident that that's not real because we got that number, the discriminant, by multiplying the differences of pairwise roots by one another, and two of those roots were not real. So it's reasonable to expect that neither is their product. On the other hand, though, the product of the first two roots was real. The product of the red and the yellow arrows here is the real number 19. But remember, when you find the discriminant, we have to multiply the differences of all pairwise roots together. And when we do that, this becomes not real anymore. And the general statement is that if all the roots of our polynomial were real numbers, then our discriminant must be a real number. So all real roots imply a real discriminant, again, because then the discriminant would be the product of differences of real numbers, and the real numbers form a ring. The contrapositive is then, if our discriminant is not a real number, then our polynomial must have at least one root that is not a real number. So non-real discriminant implies the existence of at least one non-real root. So there are three things that discriminants can do for us for any polynomial. When the discriminant is zero, we have a repeated root for sure, at least one. 
When the discriminant is irrational, we have at least one irrational root, for sure. If the discriminant is not real, we have at least one non-real root, for sure. So the discriminant looks like a great thing in general.